The Singer Simple 3337 sewing machine is actually very easy to thread, but I'm gonna show you all the tricks that I teach my students on how to thread their machine successfully. So first off, you are going to need a bobbin that either came with the machine, there's actually one inside the machine because this is a brand new model. So there's an empty one in here. Um, let's talk bobbins, we're gonna talk thread, we're gonna wind a bobbin, thread the machine, put the bobbin in, teach you how to use the needle threader, and we're gonna sew on it. So like I said, I'm gonna give you tons of tips along the way. So if I do get too excited, remember on our YouTube channel, uh, you can always click to slow down the video so you can keep up. And don't forget, you can always pause it if you're following along with me while threading your machine for the first time. So first off, Bobbins, let's talk bobbins. You cannot mix and match bobbins. So if you have another machine, older, 30, 40 years old, that probably has different kinds of bobbins. So unless they look identical to the ones that came with this machine, they cannot be used in here. These are considered a very generic bobbin. They are a class 15 plastic bobbin. Now you'll also find a class 15 metal bobbin. Please don't use those, they are heavier. This machine has been set for the weight of a plastic bobbin. Nothing wrong with plastic, all it is is holding the thread. It does not affect the quality of the stitch at all. Speaking of quality, the thread you choose when you sew can make all the difference in the world. So again, if you're pulling out thread from 30, 40 years ago that grandma gave you, let's not do that. If the spool is wooden or styrofoam, styrofoam or the, per, the price tag on it includes a sense sign, you know what I'm talking about, we're not using that thread. Treat yourself to good quality thread, whatever's available to you. Again, if it's very inexpensive and you're buying it at a discount warehouse place, it is not good quality thread. When you spend more on thread, the machine is going to love you. I have found machines that are super simple and not very expensive. You feed them good quality thread, just like good food in your own body, it makes a difference. Okay, so on this spool, because it's uh, got two ends, I am gonna use the long larger spool cap for it. I'm also placing this spool on the horizontal spool pin because it is cross wound onto the spool. Now in your book, you're gonna notice that there is an actual picture of the thread coming off of this spool. So what people try to do is actually try to figure out how to match that picture, and by the way, it doesn't matter. That picture just had to be drawn one way or the other. It is not required that you match it. So put the spool on, put the spool cap on here. Now, if your thread doesn't have the little X's and it has what I call stack thread, it, and it kind of goes up the spool, that's when you put it on the vertical spool pin and it spins off the, the thread comes off that much easier when it is vertical. Of course, with this, you don't need a spool cap, so just set it on there. I do have that little uh, felt pad to put under it as well. All right, so you're putting your spool on. If it's horizontal, you're putting a spool cap on. Something like this, you also have that small spool cap this would go on here and this would go in place as well. So just another way to hold the spool in place. I am going to just remind you now so I don't forget to say, make sure your presser foot is up. So when we come to thread the machine that that foot is not down, we'll talk about that as well. As we start to wind a bobbin, we're gonna follow the blue pictures on the machine. Now, every time you thread the machine, you will be using this first step number one. Even though it's gray back here, it is also blue here. So always, and what that does is it keeps the thread coming smoothly off the spool. See how it's evenly placed? Next, what we're gonna do is follow around this little pretensioner. If you have sewed before and you've ever wound a bobbin that came out like fluffy, um, it wasn't real tight on the bobbin, it's because you did not get it all the way into this little uh, spring-loaded guy here. This thread needs to go underneath, and look, I'm using two hands, underneath, click it in, and you need to come in and around and over the top of it, just like the picture shows with the arrow sending you this way. After you get that in there, it should have a little resistance. If you don't get it in there, that's when that bobbin doesn't wind as smooth and you don't get as much thread on the bobbin. 
Okay, the next picture, number two to three, indicates that I'm gonna take the thread from the inside up through the hole. After I pull the thread through, place it onto the bobbin winder all the way down. You heard a little click as I pushed it all the way. And then take the bobbin and push it to the right. Next, you're gonna hold the thread straight up in your hands. I wrapped it around my finger once or twice here, and then I'm gonna step on the foot control. When you do so, and I'll go slow, you see that it starts to spin. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go full speed, and I'm holding on tight. Do you notice how nice and tight that is? If I keep holding it, it actually breaks off. See how it broke off? But it left this tail sticking up out of the bobbin. What I do want you to do is don't let that tail stay anywhere near the machine. Get that to snip off and then continue to wind the bobbin. See how it nicely fills, kind of goes up and down on its own accord. And it's gonna stop when it has fully filled. Boy, that's fast. I have to give that credit there. I was not expecting it to fill that fast. All right, so it's filled most of the way. I do know that I could get a little bit more um, thread on that bobbin. You know what the difference is? Is this little stopper, it has a screw. So if, when I can, I'm gonna take that screw and loosen this just so it'll fill a little bit further out to the edge of the bobbin. But you know what, for today, that is plenty of thread on the bobbin. I'm gonna cut it here, move the bobbin to the, the left, and then come straight up. Now. As I'm holding this, before I go further, when we take the bobbin, if you come straight up and then drop it straight in here, that's exactly the way the bobbin needs to go into the bobbin winder. So you can kind of see that that picture on the bobbin cover door shows you which way the thread needs to come off. The thread needs to come off the left side and drop straight down. So as we look here, we're gonna take the bobbin and I'm gonna drop it into the machine. So you can see our picture shows us where our thread needs to follow to be put into the proper path. Take the thread, come underneath this little gray area. There's even an arrow for you to follow, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and put your finger on the bobbin and with your other hand pull as it is laid into this um, guide. You're coming all the way over to the top. There's an arrow that points down and right here is a cutter. So when you pull to the right, it cuts the thread. So the cu cut was right here. Take and place the door cover back on and leave it. So when we go to sew, you will not see me bringing this bobbin thread up like you might've done on other machines. This length is the perfect length for the machine to pull it up on its first stitch. We're back to the top where we're gonna continue threading the machine and the needle, and then we're gonna start to sew. So you will notice that this part that we used to, to go under the pretensioner to wind a bobbin, that we do not use for any part of threading the machine. So blue area only. Now we're back to the gray steps. So go ahead and leave it in the first guide. The second one, and you have a number two back here to help you know where to go. And then this is where we lifted up the presser foot. Inside, right down in this area, is actually what is called the tension. Now I know tension gets such a bad rap, but you know what? All it is is there's two discs that open when the foot is up. That's when you wanna thread the machine. When the foot goes down, the tension discs close on the thread and the machine works. If your thread is not deep enough into those discs that you cannot see, you won't get a perfect stitch. If you've ever had loops on the back of your fabric, if you've ever had thread breaks and the different things that just seem like the machine is fighting you every step of the way, most of the time it's because your machine is not threaded in the top. Now I said it's on the, the loops on the back, most people think it's the bobbin and it's not. Okay, so here's my little trick. When you go to thread down through this area, number one, your presser foot is up. Number two, take and hold the thread at the spool. And while you come down, you're threading with purpose. So three, four takes you up to this side and give it a little floss back and forth. If you do this, I guarantee you are going to find everything working smoothly. Now, I couldn't see the take up lever. That's the next step. So I'm turning my hand wheel uh, to towards me and there are arrows on the hand wheel to remind you that. 
and I'm looking for that little silver guy to come up. So I didn't do that before I started threading, so I'm kind of glad I saw that uh, so I could show you. So you're going to come up at four, you're coming in at five on the right, and then down. You, did, you just go around it and it comes right on down, down at five. If you don't get it in here, again, machine is not going to work smoothly. Go down through the little lever, and there's a six, right behind six, there is a guide for you to slip the thread around, and it's open on the right, right at the bottom of the head of the machine. So right now I'm gonna show you a little trick that I always tell my students. So remember when the presser foot is up, that's when you wanna thread it, and the thread should easily pull through the machine. When the presser foot is down, that's when it should be tight. See how tight it is? And I'm gonna show you how tight once we thread the needle, but should have a lot of resistance. That's why when you have the foot up, that's when you want to thread the machine with the foot up. Okay, one more guide at the top of the needle. It's open on the right. So take the thread behind it and down. The last thing that we have is a needle threader. Now, speaking of putting the foot down, that can give you a little bit more room to utilize the needle threader, which I love. Um, by <laughs> so uh, that's okay to lower it now, now that the machine is threaded. Okay, needle threader. First thing you saw, how it kind of comes down, there's a little head that comes around the eye of the needle. When the, <laughs> when the needle is at its highest position, that's when you'll use it, and also too, there's a little hook that's coming from the back towards you to accept the thread you're going to give it. So as this comes down, I usually stop just a little bit and I'll flip this thread underneath that arm. As you bring it all the way down, all the way, all the way, and all the way, that head needs to come around the needle completely. Lay the thread in the little arms and lift up. When you do that and let go of the thread, that's the key, a little loop will come to the back of the needle that you pull through. That is how easy, we'll do it one more time. All right, needle threader down, catch it under here. Needle threader all the way down, head around the needle, in the little grooves, lift up, not back, and let go. You gotta let go so it can pull it through. Love it. Okay, remember we don't have to bring our bobbin thread up. I'm gonna lift up the presser foot, slide the thread right down the middle of the foot. And there is a little thread cutter off to this side, I know we're it, uh, you can't see it, but I'm gonna just cut a little of my tail off. Next, I'm gonna just test the machine for how that we've done it correctly. I've taken a piece of fabric and just fold it in half. Always sew on two layers of fabric, especially when you're testing things out. So I'm gonna lower the presser foot down and take a few stitches. I can see my stitch length is really, really short, and yes, my knob is much closer to two than I would want it. So I'm gonna take it to three. There we go. All right, here is the key. Before you take your fabric out of the machine, I want you to come over to the side, turn this hand wheel towards you until the needle comes all the way up to the highest position and the take up lever comes above the housing of the machine. If you start and stop with this at the highest position, I guarantee you are going to be so much more successful than anybody who doesn't watch this video because now you have finished that stitch. And that's important because when you go to start the next stitch, you aren't trying to finish the last one. It's already been done. Lift up the presser foot in the back, pull the fabric off to the side. The cutter that's on the side, you can use from front to back or back to front, either way. So you should see the same looking stitch on the front and the back, we do. And so if I do wanna go ahead and do that again, I can put it underneath, lower the presser foot down, and you'll notice I am not holding my threads when I start to sew, and that's because I stopped with that take up lever at the highest position. So right now with the needle down, if I wanna pull that out or be done, needle all the way up, take up lever all the way up, lift it up, pull it out, and cut the thread. That is how successful it is when you thread the machine correctly. So next up, let's get into the different stitches and stitch length, and we're gonna even explain tension as well.